Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. But wait a second. Where did it all go? That's the good stuff. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome again to the Hobo. And, well, I don't know. Somewhere out there is a girlfriend for me. But I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about wrestling. A lot of wrestling about that. Because I have yet to be able to find impact on access. So I still watch it on my YouTube. And where are my notes at? Oh, they're there. And so today, this is a triple, triple, triple feature. And of course, it's a Friday. Uh, I unfortunately already had, oh, no, not that, all my pizza already. And I'm about, I have to throw that out, to finish my red wine. Oh, darn it. You know, it's like, you know it's October. I have my Halloween wine get wine glass. Keep your candy. I'll have wine. Not advice for anyone. Now I'm here to talk about a lot of pro wrestling. For as we know, there are many things going on today. Well, at least for me, I got a third job. Wow, that's impressive. But you don't want to hear about that. You want to hear about some pro wrestling. And this is a triple feature show. So the first part, talk about some Friday Night Smackdown. Because that's new. And then Impact on YouTube is still on Friday nights until I think the 22nd. So that means the 22nd I'll be doing a Tuesday show. Because I just found that out this Tuesday. Like, it's 8 o'clock. I'm not watching Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor stinks. Although I should be watching the King of Trios, though. If I was doing live stream, I'd be watching the King of Trios, because that's always fun. And then after that, it's going to be the typical red wine and pizza Friday Night Impact Wrestling show. And then, where do I put it now? Shoot. Oh, there we go. Because this Sunday, and I've had no idea what the matches are, Wow, this is terrible. But these are this is the match card. And probably Vince has something pretty similar like similar to this. And then his office somewhere saying what the matches are gonna be for hell in a cell. But as always, because it is Friday, this red wine Friday, but the California root. And this is a red blend wine. Tasty. Very tasty. Enough about that. They don't pay me to talk about that. Wait a second. They don't pay me to talk about anything. I'm doing this because of you, my YouTube audience. And please like, share, comment, subscribe. You can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Let me fix this thing. There we go. Sounds good to me. Air pieces are where they should be so I don't sound too cuckoo. And send it up on some smack it down. And the only way a smack it down show can start off is if the man Becky Lynch comes out to the ring. Baron Corbin was there. But the one who instituted the smack it down on your candy ass. Don't trademark file me. Don't don't copyright me for that. The rock. Because it doesn't matter what you say. I am the king, Rocky Maivia. Boy, did I ever turn my knee into hamburger meat. That's a whole other issue, though. So, again, it starts off. It's a new stage. I like this stage. It's a very good stage. I like that stage. Yeah. It's different. Um, They have a different logo. And they have almost a portal. 
coming out and multicolor LEDs, which is nice. It's good to see change. I like change. I do like the raw set. To some people's entrances, it does give a 3D effect, which is cool. This is also pretty good, though. It's hard to complain when they change things up. This actually, I think, looks really good. Um, I talked a little bit about the AEW entrance. It's going to look pretty cool. I wonder if this is in direct competition to that. We shall see. But so after this, we have the first match being Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair taking on Sasha Banks and Bailey. Bailey's trying to be like weird heel. She's like, hug? And you want that? I'll give them to you. So she's like, condescending heel? It works for her, though. Sasha Banks is just, I don't know, Sasha Banks. Sa Sasha Botch. As far as I care. Um, so, match of Sasha Charlotte begins to take it to both Sasha and Bailey. Beats them up a little bit. You know, eventually tags into Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch Bailey a little bit. And of course, this isn't any tag team match. All four women get involved. And after kind of a little scrum, uh, Becky and Charles seem to one up each other. Becky did the second rope leg drop, uh, to which. I think Bailey rolled out of the ring. So is Sasha and Bailey on the outside of the ring. Then, of course, Charlotte, not wanting to be undone, did her moonsault onto both of those. And somewhere in between, Sasha got like a busted lip or something. She was bleeding, but she, but she, but she didn't bleed from her forehead. Her forehead's too big and too smooth. She has to rough it up a little bit. She has to she has to get that little blade neck. She has to juice a little bit. And then the dusty one will be at peace. Yes. That'll be good. No smooth forehead in my WWE. Everyone juices and their dusty finishes everywhere. So say Dusty Road. With that being said, um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I didn't see how Sasha. It's that weird thing. It's like, I don't know if she bit her lip or if part of Charlotte's super sparkly outfit cut her funny. That's happened a couple times. I know it happened between Chris Jericho and Dean Ambrose. I think Chris Jericho had on like some kind of jewelry. And you could tell it kind of scratched Dean Ambrose in the face because Dean Ambrose was bleeding. Wasn't the fact that it was cut? It's just like it's like an annoying fingernail scratch. Could have been a fingernail scratch. You never know with those women. Um, but whatever the case, Bailey gets rolled back into the ring. She gets put into the figure eight, and she wins. And let's see here. What did I say? Whoa. I know what I said. Whoa. Look at that gathering of boobies and booty. And Sasha bleeds. One of these days, one of these girls with the, the forehead who's so smooth and silky has to be roughed up. And they have to do the blade job. So who do you think, folks, would be f the first woman actually use the blade on themselves. Indeed. Inquiring minds want to know. Sick minds want to know. What am I saying? Uh, then it was a Seth Rollins and Firefly Funhouse thing. I was in the shower. Probably typical Firefly Funhouse stuff. Probably pretty good stuff. And this leads to a Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins champion versus champion match. This seems pretty good because the WWE on Fox is pulling out all its stops. Trying to tease Fox, trying to get, get views. Um, oh, wait a second. Before I do that, I forgot to give it a rating. This was a cheat. Uh, the Becky and Charlotte versus Sasha and Bailey. That was a good match. That was a cheeseburger match.
Oh, I forgot to give shout outs. I'll give shout outs later. I have a lot of shout outs to give. I just realized that. Um, every so often in the Odyssey, I would point out Hulk Hogan was there, Ric Flair was there, Lita was there, um, some other guy was there. We'll, we'll get to him. There was someone else famous. I forget who it was. I wrote it down it's somewhere here. Goldberg was there. Uh, Mark Henry was there. And we'll get to the other guy. So uh, Seth versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This is a fun match. Uh, Nakamura goes for the armbar first. Because this is right into his triangle. Very good jujitsu, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, and then Seth does his dives. I don't know. I'm kind of over that for some reason. It just seems he does the three of them. It's almost becoming the three moves of Doom almost. And I don't know. I don't like that. It also might be me. Um, Seth, the one thing WWE does do is that they book Seth really strong, though. And eventually, though, the lights go out. See your lights go out. Yes. Oh. That's not good. Oh, there we go. That's what I needed. Yeah, so let's, the lights keep on going out. They don't, it's not motion stop. Because my camera's not good. Or just old. And my computer's older. So, of course, with the lights, we know what happens. The lights go out, the fiend comes out. Who is the fiend going to get? I was kind of hoping that the fiend would come out and get Sami Zayn. That would have been funny. But no, he comes out, attacks Seth. Seth, like, runs up to the entranceway. But he turns his back on the actual entrance. That's where the fiend comes from. Uh, let's see here. What else is there? Uh, so the fiend, the fiend gets Seth into the mandible claw and tosses Seth off the stage. He commits murder on Seth. So I guess Seth wins via DQ. So Shinsuke lost. I know what they're doing. They're trying to build up the Hell in a Cell. It's still a ham sandwich match. And then we get to Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. So again, really for the first part, the first half of SmackDown was really wrestling heavy. Um, Shane just starts beating up Kevin Owens with a ladder. He eventually throws him outside, throws him on the announce table, starts beating him with the announce table. Oh, and by the way, the, announce, the announcing was really good. It was just Corey Graves and Michael Cole. And without Renee Young, they didn't seem distracted. Renee, wait a second. Good commentary. No Renee. Good commentary. No Renee. Renee. Bantering bad commentary. Indeed. So with this, um, Shane beats up Kevin Owens with the ladder. And he beats him up after he threw him on the table with the announce table covering. Whoa, when did that happen? Um, <laughs> Shane goes to break the count, which is weird. Because he just kind of rolls in the ring. And then rolls out of the ring. Maybe it's just an old reflex he has to break. Can he just beats up Kevin Owens. It's so fun. And he does the elbow onto Kevin Owens while he's on the, on the, on the table. He almost missed the table, though. That would not have been good. Uh, Kevin Owens, during the commercial break, eventually comes back. I wish they would have shown the highlight during the commercial, but eh, not to be had. Uh, he power bombed him onto a ladder. He, he was on the outside of the ring. Oh, no, he didn't power bomb onto the ladder. That comes later. But he had Shane laid out on a ladder. He goes up to the top rope, does a senton onto said Kane. And you could tell that was a rigged ladder, folks. The reason why I could tell it was a rigged ladder, because where Shane lay himself, you could tell obvious red tape that said, X marks the spot. 
Who knows? So that was that was pretty good. Then they're of course sprawling the ladders. Uh, Shane takes a steel chair. Steel chairs get involved. He takes that to Kevin Owens' ankle. So obviously he can't climb up because his ankles hurt. Um, eventually, somehow, a ladder got propped up on the bottom rope, and Kevin Owens power bombs him onto that ladder, which is pretty good. Although Shane McMahon has to realize those ladders just ask the other guy from Eminem. What happens with ladders? Ladders tend to have a mind of their own. Uh, Shane also did a coast to coast on a ladder. Again, it kind of flopped funny. Again, the fact that ladders do have a mind of their own, they're going to fall not necessarily where you want them to. It's always an issue. But eventually, Kevin Owens wins. He climbs the ladder, comes down, and just for a little extra stink, you're fired. Shane McMahon gives him a stunner. This was a fun surf and turf match. Then Paul Heyman comes out. That's the promo, as only Paul Heyman can. And this leads to an eight man match where the only person they really announce is Braun Strowman. So I guess that's going to set something up for WrestleMania? We don't know. We shall find out, though. Because it's Braun Strowman, The Miz, and Heavy Machinery taking on AJ Styles, Robert Roode, Dolph Ziggler, and Randy Orton. And if you're wanting to hashtag um, FTRKO or hashtag the revival, we'll see them later. So with this match, it's like, where's the revival? Shouldn't they be tagging with Randy Orton? That would make sense. Or you could Randy Orton tag with AJ in the club. It's just like random heels they threw together. Uh, eventually, it was just a spot fest. Miz eats an RKO, so that means, of course, Randy's not winning because he hit that way too early. Uh, Braun takes his jogger on the ring again. AJ Styles gets his spots in. Rue gets his spots in. Heavy Machinery teasers his spots. Ziggler gets his um, zigzag in. It's just kind of a spot fest. Uh, the whole thing about this is that Braun Strowman intimidates Tyson Fury. I guess he's an up-and-coming boxer. He looks pretty jacked. I would not mess with him. But I don't mess with anyone, really. I just take their aluminum. So, that being said, um, who won the smash anyway? Oh, yeah, Braun Strowman, of course, won. Who gets who he pays, though? Doesn't really matter. Uh, but he won in a cheeseburger of a match. The only reason why I say it's a cheeseburger of a match is eventually he gets into Tyson Fury's face and Fury teases going the ring. There's some light profanity going on between the two. Is this going to set up that celebrity WrestleMania match? I think so. Yeah, you can let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, then uh, Marshmallow, the DJ Marshmallow, won the 24-7 champion. A, they're in LA. Someone wanted back, but they said check out our Twitter face or YouTube something. I'm not. I'll just watch. I'll, I can wait till Monday. Or they could probably, or they'll probably show the replay of it on the sixth for Hell in a Cell. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, so March, so DJ Marshmallow is the new 24/7 champion. Oh, that's fun. Something new. It is the 24/7 champion. It's a can of soup. Matt. Of course, he pinned Carmel after like tripping her or something. I don't know. It was like that, like incidental contact thing. So that was it. Then the next match is really fun, and it's one of my personal favorite match. We have a lumberjack match. Oh, they're so fun to watch. It was Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan. But Daniel Bryan was commentary. 
Of course, there's a whole bunch of lumberjacks, traditionally heels on, on, on one half of the side and then the other half or quarter like, like, like that. It's going to be the faces. Um, lumberjack matches are so much fun. Uh, for the most part, Perone gets tossed out first. He just starts beating up all the lumberjacks. He got to beat up the Viking Raiders. That was funny. It was funny to see. Poor Viking Raiders. Like, why do we have to be part of a freaking lumberjack match? We're going to get beat up. Roman gets tossed out. And, of course, the heel the heel lumberjacks beat up uh, Roman Reigns. And, of course, the face lumberjacks throw him back in. Um, pretty good back and forth match. I thought it was really fun. It told really good story. The lumberjacks. Ashley did the job they're supposed to do. They kept both men in the ring until Luke Harper showed up. Of course, it's a no DQ match. Luke Harper, Harper can do whatever he wants. He starts to beat up Roman Reigns. Therefore, Daniel Bryan comes in the ring, starts to beat up Luke Harper. They all go to the outside. Then Roman Wayne Reigns takes everyone out. And literally, he does take everyone out. Uh, Eric Rowan uses Ali as a weapon. If I ever see a, a big, big heel using another person as a weapon, you know it's a fun match. Uh, Roman Reigns did win, though. So we'll see what happens. Hell in a cell. But I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. I like lumberjack matches. I like the fact there was a story. There was some interaction. They, they used the lumberjacks as weapons. They beat up said lumberjacks. The lumberjacks beat them up. They used Ali as a, one of the lumberjacks as a weapon against the other guy. That was this was a fun match. This I don't care what people say. Lumberjack matches are fun. This was a surf and turf match. And then uh, it was the main event time. Uh, Kofi and there was a sign. Kofi's not a waiter. Stop throwing me pancakes. Kofi, you're not a waiter. Stop throwing people pancakes. Um, it was Brock Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston. And Brock Lesnar got his pyro. Oh, and by the way, some of the 3D graphics for the TV audience, they were over the top. Uh, the, uh, the legit boss had her like super-sized rings floating above everything. Um, the, this, this monster hellhound appeared when Roman Reigns came out. Uh, Brock Lesnar got his pyro. Brock Lesnar deserves pyro. He won with one F5 to Kofi Kingston. It's the way it should have ended. I liked it. It was a cheeseburger match. And again, the reason why it was a cheeseburger match, not only did Brock Lesnar win in convincing fashion, took one F5, ended that, but then Kane Velasquez shows up. They, they must have stolen him from AAA. Wow. Uh, he came down with Rey Mysterio Jr. Again, is this going to be a setup fight for WrestleMania? A double celebrity match at WrestleMania? That could be good. And to me, this was a good, fun cheeseburger match. Wait, I already said that. Um, but overall, SmackDown, the wrestling segments were really good. The non-wrestling segments, rock. Just going on forever. It's like he has carte blanche over everything. Parts were really good. Parts were like, really rock. But overall, again, this was a good cheeseburger smackdown. And now, I haven't done this in a while, but it's time to take a break. And now that we're back, back from our break, it's time to do some classic Red Wine and Pizza Impact Friday. And with this, to start this episode off, because I forgot about it. You know what? There were a bunch of people interacting with me in the Discord, and they were all fun people to talk to. The cool guy. 
you, sir, get the six count. No, no, King! You, sir, are infamous in the Discord circles. You, sir, however, are also a master air guitarist. Ben Blaze, I wish, sir, that you were extreme, but you, sir, are just carrying your briefcase boombox around all over the place. Battery boy for no battery guy. Battery guy four twenty. You sir need to crawl out.
Barry Aquina, dos. You, sir, always seem to win by dirty pen. And Regal Machine, you, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band. Thanks for making the Discord for Impact that much more entertaining. It's so terrible what we talk about. Half of which I probably can't even mention on the show. Between the drug reference, the, the woman references, the female anatomy references, things that you just said, female anatomy references. Terrible stuff. With Impact, again, starts off. O-V-E. O-V-E. Ohio versus everyone. Uh, so Sammy Callahan's there, starts to talk about what happened at the wedding. If you don't know, check it out. Uh, then the first match of the night was Madison Rain and versus Kier Hogan versus Sunil Dashwood. Oh, uh, for the most part, Sunil Dashwood versus Hogan and Madison Rain. Um, there is an amazing looking butterfly suplex. But for the most part, it's two on one until you have a bunch of heel miscues. And it just wasn't a one heel miscue. There were two heel miscues, which doesn't make it pretty good. Um, there was a power bomb that Tino Dashwood did. I think it was Kira hooking a power bomb onto Madison Reigns. Uh, the heel started arguing who should get the win. <laughs> Are you trying to kill me? Yeah, someone said that. This was a fun match. Of course, Tino Dashwood was going to win. Mainly because she's going to be challenging Ty Valkyrie at Bound for Glory on the 20th. And again, I'll be doing a review upon that. I'm still on my copyright violation list, though. I have, again, 50 some odd more days. So I'm almost done, though. But Team Dodgers won. And I'll tell you what Impact still does the women's division, their knockout divisions, right? This was a solid cheeseburger match. And then it's the debut of Johnny Swinger. Oh, God. We're back to the 80s all over again. The late 80s, early 90s. So many Zumba pants. Zima. Miami Vice. Pastels. Co cocaine. So much excess. Because it was Johnny Swinger versus... I don't know. Jobber. Ovum. I can't even read my handwriting. If you can tell me what that name is, you are a lot better than I am, folks. Johnny Swinger. The man, the myth, the legend, the lying heel. He pulled my hair. He never even touched his hair. Uh, again, he does classic heel. Rope work. Starts to drag. What's his, the Jobber's eyes across the rope. For the most part, it was a squash match minus two moves put on the bug guy. It was good. It gave, us a, uh, it gave us a good insight to Johnny Swinger. It was a fun match. It was a fun popcorn match. A little relaxing versus all the SmackDown stuff. I needed a little break from the seriousness of pro wrestling. This achieved that. Therefore, this is a cheeseburger match. Then we have a North promo, and they're saying how much better they are. Eventually, the North show up again. They confront Conan, who's drinking some Patron. How can Conan afford Patron? Oh, wait, he's Conan. He can afford probably a lot better than Patron, actually. 
Um, Tessa Blanchard has a promo. Yeah, she's okay. Eddie Edwards <laughs> talks to both a kendo stick and Tommy Dreamer. Wow. And then there's more of Ace Austin and Alicia Edwards. Ace says Eddie Edwards has an addiction problem and he, he can help him. And Ace Edwards is a scuzzball. Uh, then we have Eddie Edwards and his kendo stick. Kenny, take on Reno scum. Of course, because they're in Las Vegas. Uh, Eddie tries to tag in the kendo stick. For the most part, it's really a two-on-one match. Uh, Reno scum beat up Eddie Edwards a lot. They did the uh, arm stink, arm pit stink, or the, or the pit st the pit stop. Wow, I'm old. I remember the pit stop. That was it. That's when you rub a guy in your opponent's armpit. I think the Bushwhackers used to do that a lot. Also known as the Sheep Herders from old NWA. I was watching those matches. They were funny. They just, they're just, they just become bloody messes so quickly. But for the most part, just again, this match might as well. I'm, I better focus on this match. This match might as well have been a two on one handicap match. Uh, Don Callis is just so funny. Eddie Edwards is a Marty Jin Eddie. And Kenny the Kendo Stick is Shawn Michaels. Oh, wow. I love the fact that Impact is not afraid to reference other promotions in their broadcast. Impact, you get a thumbs up from me. But again, once Eddie Edwards tags in Kenny the Kendo Stick, he just beats everyone up. And then it was every kind of, and then uh, Kenny got flung out of the ring. Eddie Edwards does some flippy thing out of the ring. Don Kals mentions every kind of flying, flippy, lucha move possible. Wrestling! And why was the kendo stick involved? Wrestling! The ref kept it real. Wrestling! And of course, Eddie Edwards, because he just beat up people with a kendo stick, wins the match. This was, I'll tell I'm going to upgrade this match. This was fun. I was entertained. This was a surf and turf match. And anytime you can make me talk about wrestling, wrestle, wrestle, I'll get excited. Then there's um, OVE giving an apology to Melissa Santos. You could tell he was reading. He was reading it from the heart. <laughs> to whom it may concern, mainly Melissa Santos and Brian Cage. That was good. Um, and then Cage comes out in rage and then kills a fan. He grabs the fan and like kills him against the ring. Brian Cage, you can't do that. And then he gets let off by Las Vegas' finest local enhancement police talent. <laughs> because of wrestling! And then this led to uh, the next match was Chris Bay versus Daga. It's pretty good. Uh, Jake Chris or Dave Chris, one of the Chris brothers. I always get the two confused, even though they have very different hair, hairstyles and, and different looks. Who was on com? Oh, Chris, I just said Chris was on commentary. That doesn't help me anything. But uh, this was a fun match. Really fast paced counter wrestling match. I'll tell you what, I like this stuff. It's fun, fast, lucha-style wrestling. Uh, super flippy, but yet it still had an air of matte wrestling to it. They did really good. I mean, the slingshot over the top, he, he was really good. Chris is so good at commentary. And the drunk, hot Asian MILF in the background. I'll remember you when I go to Las Vegas, miss. Uh... <laughs> He was just in every camera shot. He showed her. It's all over the place. You didn't hear me say that either. But it was just fun, fast pace. I'll tell you what, this was the match tonight. Again, whenever I see a top rope Spanish fly, you know it's up there. Uh, Daga eventually won, but it was such a good match, though. This was a surf and turf match. Then there's more OVE stuff that was funny. Uh, Sammy Callahan went, went, went to talk to Melissa outside the, the police station. 
the back door of the arena and said, yeah, I'm sorry your husband went all crazy, and I'm sorry I hit you over the head with a bottle, but it did feel good. So it's kind of there. Um, then there was uh, Moose and Ken Shamrock and some Hot Topic in a mall. That's what it looked like. And then we had the main event of the evening, which was Mike Elgin versus TJP with Fall Ball in his corner. Why is this the main event? The other match should have been the main event. It's just so fun, but and I understand they're the big names in the main event, so that's probably why. TJP, for the most part, the whole story of this match, TJP's trying to be faster and to ground Mike Elgin. Mike Elgin's just trying to overpower TJP. Whenever TJP kept the match pace quick, it was really good. However, once Elgin could impose his will, it really shows power and strength on TJP. He had the advantage. Makes sense. Uh, who, else was, wait, who else was there? And Elgin used the power. TJP still has a great wrecking ball dropkick. That's good. Although Elgin did catch TJP in a power slam. Eventually gives him the Elgin bomb to win. Uh, it's a good cheeseburger match. I'll tell you what, I've seen Raw, AEW, SmackDown, and Impact. If I had to rank them, I'll tell you what, it would be a four-way tie for first place. It would be a four-way tie for or like third place. Every show has their faults. Every show has their strengths. It all depends how much money you put into it. Oh, and also, of course, on Impact, there was, there was the um, obligatory uh, female uh, knockout promo where it was uh, Jessica Havoc and the Sinister Minister and Ty Valkyrie was trying to butter up to her saying, hey, if you take out uh, this person, I'll give you belt shot. It was fun, though. But again, all three shows, if Impact was on, say, TBS, Annie on TNT, Raw on USA, SmackDown on Fox, I think it was kind of a four-way tie. That means either Raw and SmackDown were down there or AEW and Impact were up there. Again, Impact, I'll tell you what, this was enough. I would have given this a Bacon cheeseburger, but I can't do that. So it's just a cheeseburger show. And then that leads us. And let's see here. I want you to hit my music. Because no, I just stole the music of Dr. Tom. That's a little bit late for Dr. Tom to come out, to come over. He's so sophisticated. He likes his beauty sleeps and his satin sheets, wearing his silk pajamas. And his little, like, little puffy eye shades where I have my 150 count thread sheets, which are going bare with holes in them. And, and a cat sleeping on my foot. Where's my kitty? Oh, she always hides when I move the chair. She knows She's smart. She knows what's happening. So now I'm here to talk about some Hell in a Cell. And I think Dr. Tom did this to me intentionally. He knew he did not know what the matches were going to be. Granted, looking by my scribble on the sticky note, I don't think I know what the matches are, but I'll try and take a good guess and give some kind of prediction. So, uh, I'm starting off at the undercard. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Mustafa Ali for, I guess, the U.S. belt? I'm going to say Shinsuke Nakamura wins. No real big surprise there, folks. 
Um, the Revival of Versus the New Day. I can't see them dropping the belt yet. They're not doing anything with the New Day. The Revival win as well. However, I do see Bailey Tweener or Condescending Heel Bailey lose. Oh, no. I think Bailey. Yeah, Bailey's going to lose her belt to Charlotte. And I'll tell you what. This is my snooze of the night. That match is going to be freaking boring as anything. Wow. There is that match. Then we have Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan versus Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. They want to continue this food feud. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan are going to have to win. I don't have a match tonight, do I? Uh, then we have Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks for the WWE SmackDown Champion. I think they're going to do a funky thing here. I think they're going to do the 50-50 split. Sasha Banks is going to win the title from Becky Lynch. Not my phone cold lock. That's my news. It might not be a match. Wow, this is a terrible card. Ew. Um, so Banks wins. Banks is so botchy. She's either really good or really bad. When she's bad, she's very, very bad. I don't know. I think the bonus, they're going to throw one more match in there. It's going to be Brock Lesnar versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Brock Lesnar is not losing that title. That's the bonus. There's no match of the night on this card. Uh, then the main event is going to be Seth versus The Fiend. Folks, The Fiend is winning that championship. That is my stone cold lock. You know what, folks? There is no match of the night. If I wasn't doing this on YouTube, making myself a big breakfast, drinking a lot of booze, I might not watch it. So, I'm even going to text my friend that. You know. Sir, what's that really win? You know. This. Hell. And a spell. Card. Minus. The Fiend winning. Sucked. Well, not what WWE wants to do. Send. No, not send all. No. No, I, I sent to one person. But so those are my predictions. You're gonna let me know what you guys think. And I guess have a good night. Again, if you are going to drink the bubbly, or if you're too poor to drink the bubbly, just drink the basic red wine. Do not drink and drive, folks. Call a taxi, Uber, Lyft, or walk.